Hi all, Mass Burn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we are taking a look at two digital light and processing projectors. One is a classic model which just shoot, shoots straight out and you need quite some distance and one is a ultra short distance model. Now there are a good 15 to 16 years between these two models. So they're both about the same power use, 250 watt thereabout. But this has three times the light output or the lumens brightness than the old one. But the contrast level is absolutely insane. This is 20 times higher or better contrast. This is made for 1024 pixels, uh, 4 to 3 radio. And this is a widescreen, 920p. Let's just try to first test them out, see how much of a distance we need to the wall to get a proper image, and then let's take them apart. Okay, so at first here we have the in-focus projector. It's sitting at a distance of about 3 meters, pointing out over into a semi-dark basement wall here. And it's about 3 meters over there, and that gives us a display size of 160 centimeters, or about 65 inches. All right, the ultra short distance projector, as we can see here, we have an 80 inch image now, but the projector here is sitting a mere 60 centimeters from the wall. So that's five times closer and a picture that is about one fourth larger. So we have the new one sitting over here and the other one here. So let's first look at the lamps. And these are just almost identical high pressure metal lamps with a high yeah, light output. And you can also see just from the physical size that this, this explains the wattage difference. This is a 270 watt and this is 230. So actually it seems that the newer one is a bit smaller, but uh, also has uh, some better air cooling, some forced airflow compared to the old one over here. Now, I don't want to talk about the lamps all day because what I discovered here is that I did not quite know what DLP was, a digital light processing, but it is a technology that is patented by Texas Instruments. And when I got these open, check it out, they look almost completely identical. And I have taken some heat for tearing down uh, things that work or did not repair what could have been repaired just in order to tear it down. But I think we have to stop it here. I would just actually compare these two, put them back together, have two working projectors, but... Okay, so I was not going to do a tear down of this old one. Uh, but I think after seeing what digital light processing really is, we have to do a tear down. I don't need a working 15 year old projector because I want to show you what's inside this mechanic here. What digital light processing, which is copyrighted by Texas Instrument and is used all the way up to today. They have developed the technology. So let's see why these are exactly identical. What kind of technology is it that have not moved for almost 20 years, but have just gotten smaller? Seems pretty identical to many other technology concepts. So. I, th I say we, we tear this down now, right now. We, we want to see what's inside this one. So the reason for the interruption before is that when I look up digital light processing and I see that, okay, that's a collection of yeah, chipsets from a Texas Instrument and they um, copyrighted this back in 1997. And that consists of a, uh, yeah, a chipset, of course, and then of a um, yeah, small, very peculiar device sitting down here behind these two uh, band connectors here. And that is the Digital Micromirror Device, or DMD for short. Now we have our Xenon Arc Lamp sitting over here, which shines through a color wheel. And that's how you actually get the color reproduction, that for each turn of these on the first generation, uh, you would sync that to one frame. So this would rotate at 30 revolutions per second. Now in more modern ones like this, it could actually be up to 10 revolutions per frame. So the micro mirror device sitting in, in here is actually a MOEMS or a micro opto electromechanical system. This was patented by Texas Instrument in 1987. 
and it is based on the invention of the MEMS, which, which is just a micro-electromechanical system. And they, what they did was mounting mirrors on top of these small hinged um, yeah, systems, and they are as small as something like uh, 16 micrometers across, and one mirror corresponds to one pixel. And with some 10 to 12 degree tilt uh, for the on to off state, it can also do gray shades by tilting these to um, a 12 bit pattern. So let's get the old one torn down so we can look into the color wheel, the DMD, and look at the micro up to electromechanical system under the microscope. A very interesting board overall because uh, we have the DLP chipsets that we have heard about earlier. It has a lot of dedicated RAM on both sides. We have an, another DLP chip on the other side. We have a cold fire FPGA sitting here. has its own 25 megahertz crystal. The DLP chips has a 58 and 75 megahertz crystal sitting here and here. We have some analog devices, AD9884. Most likely a AZ. Not exactly sure what it does there. We have a small InFocus, which is the brand name of the whole projector. Microcontroller sitting here. Have some silicon image, uh, IDT, chips, uh, Genesis, VLXIAX. So a, a lot of special chips in this set. And then we have the um, press mount connectors here down to the mechanical mirror device. And over here we have a TDA 7056B, which is the audio amplifier. Now one small funny feature I found on this board is that up here we have a micro sim microcontroller of some sort. But what is funny about it is that the crystal for this sits mounted. A 20.25 megahertz crystal sits mounted in a pin socket. That seems a bit um, weird, unless this has to do with maybe PAL or regional video settings. That could be. Let's check out the back side. So we have some more DLP chips, 24 megahertz controller, DLP chip, RAM, 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 RAM. So yeah, that is mostly just passives and some more RAM sitting here. Actually, we do have a special DLP chip sitting here, DMD SR 16 c c k p n So this must be the dedicated digital microelectric device for controlling the digital micro mirror device. A Magnatech model 3979. Input 100 to 230 volt AC at 1.8 amps at 230 volt. Output 25 volt DC, 12 volt DC, 5 volt DC, 3.3 volt DC, and minus 8.8 volt DC. So a, yeah, I would not say run of your mill because that is actually quite an interesting con construction we have here. Seems this output module here that is a special Xenon Arc Flash power supply, power supply that uh, it needs to put out a very high voltage around 15 to 20 kilovolt in order to strike an arc inside the lamp and then go down at a lower voltage to drive it. We have the input on off switch, capacitor and inductor filtering in the input. We have a small soldered in fuse down here. And then we have a transformer here and here. And the DC bulk capacitance sitting in the middle here. A lot more output capacitance over here, I guess, since that is 16 volts. And in here we have a IXFH26N50 from Ixus. We have some uh, Schottky diode sitting around it. And on the other side here, uh, actually we have a Brit Rectifara and we have the same IGPT sitting there. So we have most likely a 
half switch power supply here and then for the smaller power supplies maybe just some smaller transistors but the main power supply consists of a half bridge sitting here now the main optics quite nice piece uh, here milled aluminum chassis all very sturdy parts and as you can see you can actually follow the uh, movement of the elements how that is constructed with different angled slots in order to yeah get the right focus length and focal length and so on not sure how much we can actually see down through here but a very nice piece and also has a slight focus movement over here made in japan not much else information on that so now the interesting part here our optical piece here we have the light source input from here it tunnels into a color wheel goes on to another lens reflects on a mirror goes through a focusing lens here here we can see the connector pads for the digital mirror micro mirror device the heatsink for it and on the other side we have a prism here which shines the light down onto the micro mirror device here and as we can see through the other prism sitting down here we can actually see the resulting image and we can gaze right into the micro mirror there it is that little square in the middle what a bunch of nice optics we have here now one thing i wanted to mention earlier is that the whole chassis of this is actually some kind of um, aluminum alloy maybe it's very lightweight very lightweight seems lighter than aluminum just a, it's a wafer on it um, and i actually had a few screws uh, actually yeah break while trying trying to take it apart so quite interesting what that might be but might just be steel screws into aluminum that locks up oh well enough about that so the prism here it's actually two prisms uh, glued together and as we can see we can look down through the you can see the hole in the black padding on the bottom here which is here that's where the digital mirror device is sitting micro mirror and we can see that from the other side as well so yeah just a nice little prism to play with it's uh, made of all glass by the way because uh, some of these are actually just plastic the uh, yeah, what's this magnifying lens that sits right after the light source? This is also, uh, that's actually right after the light source, this one. And then goes over to the plastic lens, so that's just a part of the magnifying chain of optics as well. Now the color wheel, quite interesting. As you can see, it is um, highly coated, so from the other side we can really see the the real colors Let's see we have red green blue and then we have a see-through lens here that is probably used for timing not as clear color on the back side here but that's also the output side now some of these older projectors have been known to you get a fuzzy image or a i'm not sure what you call it but you can see all along the edge here that the mirror is damaged and this is very um, typical for projectors of this age that the glue used and uh, the heat from the lamp simply just uh, ruins all the mirror coatings inside the uh, projector the digital micro mirror device also seems to suffer a bit from glass pest inside let's just enjoy this really nice looking gold coated ceramic package on the back side we have the heatsink connector and the connectors up to the PCB. 
So let's get this under the microscope and see if we can see some of these small mirrors. But I have no hope to actually see any of these because we have a resolution of 1024 times 768 mirrors sitting down here. But uh, let's see what we get. Here we have it, the corner of the digital micromirror device under the microscope. I hope this is good enough. You can actually just see a few of the pixels there or down, uh, down to the single mirrors. But I admit that even with this microscope it is very hard to actually see uh, the single mirrors here. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, which really did take me by surprise. I did not expect to find something as exotic and exciting as a digital micromirror device. Had I knew that this was inside from the start, then you would not have seen me make this intro. I would just have torn it down right away, get down into this little gold covered baby here. That's really a nice piece of electronics and mechanical engineering to see what's actually possible by just etching a silicon wafer that you can build these nanometer machines. It's really incredible. So thank you for watching. I hope this video made you consider to subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, thank you for that. And thank you to all the channel members. So until next time, see ya.